Hello, I'm David Hoffman, and in this episode, I'm going to share with you my first adventure in adding a full sized 101 keyboard to an embedded design. Now, since I've never added a 101 keyboard to an embedded design, my first step was a web search to dig up some documentation. I did find one wonderful resource, which is located at computerengineering.org, that provided nearly everything I needed to get started. You can find a link to this resource in the video description. Now, to follow along in this video, I highly recommend referencing this website. Most of the content in this video is sourced from the information found there. And you can also download a basic version of the code demonstrated in this video at magidavid.com. Okay, let's begin by covering a little bit about keyboards and how they talk to the host. Keyboards talk to the host using a serial communication protocol. When a key is pressed, the keyboard generates a make code to indicate which key has been pressed. And when a key is released, the keyboard generates a break code to indicate that the key has been released. This system allows the host to act on either a key press or a key release. Almost all make codes consist of a single byte, while most break codes consist of two to three bytes, though some can go as high as eight bytes. The frame generated from a key press consists of one start bit, always zero, eight data bits with the least significant bit first, one parity bit, odd parity, and one stop bit, which is always one. Okay, let's take a look at the hardware. Now, my initial setup consisted of a Mini 28A, a 5-pin DIN female panel mount socket that I soldered 22 gauge wire to so I could connect it to the breadboard, an 8 LED home built display module, and a keyboard, of course. The keyboard in use is rather old, many 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 years old in fact, but it still works just fine. Since a keyboard can pull upwards of 275 milliamps of juice, I'm using a regulated 5 volt supply to save the pick kit 2 from possible destruction. The data and clock lines from the keyboard are open collector, so a pull-up resistor is required to properly operate those two lines. I'm using a 1K ohm resistor for this task, though they could easily be increased to 10K or more to limit current further. So after getting all the hardware set up, I began writing program code to receive make and break codes from the keyboard. This information was then shown on the LED display, and this worked fine to get the keyboard to host communication working. The main problem I encountered was that the display would only show the last byte received, and I wasn't able to really see the complete make or break code. I thought about this problem for all of about oh, 5 seconds, and then decided to use the built-in RS-232 interface on the Mini 28A to send the code data to Hyper Terminal on my computer. This allowed me to see the entire make and break codes generated by the keyboard and spot problems with the program a lot easier. I then added a basic lookup table to convert the make code received into an actual ASCII character code. As you can see here, when a key is pressed, the make code is displayed and then the appropriate ASCII character is displayed, and this is followed by the break code when the key is released. This is where things stand at the moment, and you can download the receive code from magidavid.com. But bear in mind that it's a rudimentary version and doesn't include error handling yet. In fact, it's not even checking the parity bit at this point to make sure the data came through okay. But it will give you an idea of how the receive code works so you can include keyboard support in your next project. I hope you found this episode interesting and be sure to check out these other episodes as well. Thanks for watching.